In this tutorial, I'll talk you through creating a project for Cubase to work with Notical Standalone. We start by creating a new project which creates a 16 track MIDI sequence. Now, there's quite a bit of work to run through to get your project ready for use by Notical, so we have made this project file available as a template on the Intermorphic website if you don't want to run through this sequence of steps by yourself, but it's instructive to see what you have to do so you understand what's going on. Right, the first thing we need to do is for each MIDI track specify the MIDI input that we're going to be listening out to. In this case we're going to be listening out to MIDI yoke input 1. And for each track we also need to define a filter such that each track will only listen out to MIDI input data from one specific MIDI channel. So the way you do that is you select the appropriate preset for channel filtering, select the channel number which matches the track number, and you must remember to select the active module checkbox, otherwise the filtering will not be applied. We're also going to specify a MIDI output device for this particular track. Now onto the next track, we need to again define a local filter. We're only going to listen out to channel 2 in this case for track 2, and again we remember to set it as an active module. We set the MIDI output device and set the MIDI input device, which is again MIDI yoke channel 1. On to the next track. Set the input to be MIDI yoke channel 1, the output to be the Microsoft Wavetable Synthesizer for purposes of our demonstration, and again set up a filter in which case we're only going to be listening out to MIDI channel 3 for track 3. On to track 4, repeat the same process, define the input MIDI uh, channel, sorry, input MIDI device, the output MIDI device, and define a filter we're only going to listen out to this particular channel for this track. We need to run through this step for all 16 tracks. Now to save a bit of time for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to close this project and open up a project which I saved just a moment ago and we'll see that for each of these tracks I've defined the input and the output and just to choose one at random I'll show that I've defined a local filter where we're only listening out to one specific MIDI channel. So this is the file that you would download for the Intermorphic website. Before use we need to double check the metronome is set up such that there's no click, no audible click will listen to. We also need to verify that our synchronization, synchronization is set up properly on MIDI Sync. Here we're supplying the MIDI Sync information to MIDI Yoke channel 2, which is what Notical will be listening out to. Now, when we're ready to start playback through Notical, through Cubase, click on the record enable button for each MIDI track. We're now ready to go from Cubase perspective. Let's go to Notical where we double check the MIDI output device is set to the MIDI input device which Cubase is listening out to which is MIDI Yoke 1. The MIDI input device from which we're getting MIDI sync information from Cubase is MIDI Yoke channel 2. And finally double check that you've got the sync uh, tick box set in Notical. We're now ready to start Notical listening out for uh, transport synchronization events from Cubase. And now let's go back to our Cubase project and start recording the data from Notical, which will now play back through the specified MIDI output device. And we can now listen to what Notical creates. Now clearly if you wanted to, you could set up each MIDI 
track in Cubase to paste through a different VSTR synthesizer if you so wished. And I must re-emphasize again the importance of setting up a local filter such that each MIDI track only listens out to one MIDI channel. If you don't remember to do this for every MIDI track, then you'll get an absolute mush of sounds coming out of Cubase. And again, to save a lot of time, you can download the template for this project from the Intermorphic website.